Today, I got a suggestion from a patron who said, have I ever checked out all of these tools on Amazon? So what I did is I went through my current tools that I use very often, uh, tools that I really like, uh, mostly tools that I have bought from Stumac, and I looked for the equivalent of those tools on Amazon. Now, a couple things I wanna do is go through them to see what's my first impressions. I'll talk about why I picked these tools. And uh, this will be mostly a first impression. I'll be able to check them out to see what I think. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Another thing I wanna note is that I will be posting uh, somewhere on the screen the prices I paid for these tools on Amazon. Those are the current prices based on when I made this video. They go up and down. Amazon has a very interesting pricing system that moves. Um, but I will also put links down below. Now, what's great about the links down below is they're affiliate links, which means if you click the link and you buy any of these items down below, uh, it'll donate a small portion of your purchase to the channel. And the great thing about that is it doesn't add any cost to you. It's, it doesn't cost you anything more to, to make the purchase down below. It just uh, helps fund the channel. But please, if you find the prices, better prices or better items, feel free to take those uh, purchases. Okay, look, hot dog bubble wrap. Okay, ah, this is something really cool. Uh, it comes from the wrenches. What this is, is a fret uh, bender, so to speak. It, uh, if you're gonna install new frets, this is something I was very interested in. Now I'll post the actual price. If I recall, it was $50. And the reason why I was impressed with that is, wow, is this is something that I own currently from Stu Mac and I paid 150, I think 155. Again, I'll post actual prices so we know. And uh, just touching it, I can tell it's pretty cool and pretty good. If you are definitely not a professional luthier and want to do bend your, uh, your fret wire. So what happens is you buy a fret wire and uh, you can buy it in all kinds of lengths. I usually buy them like in two foot lengths. And then what happens is you need to radius your fret wire to the radius of the fretboard. So if you have a nine and a half inch radius fretboard or 10 if it's a PRS, 12 it's a little flatter. You can go seven and a, and a half if you're a uh, vintage fender. Um, uh, seven and a quarter, I'm sorry, seven and a quarter for vintage fender. Uh, you can then set this and kind of radius the fret wire. So what's great about this is you basically just mount it right into the edge of your uh, your your thing. Or what I did to mine uh, is I mounted this onto a two by four and then I clamped the two by four on my thing so I can actually take it off my workbench. Uh, that was the, the way I did it. And 50 bucks, I cannot beat that. That is really cool. Very, 50 bucks, very cool. Especially if you're starting out as a repair guy or gal, um, I think you could make your money back on that fast and then maybe buy the other one. But I wanna always, always preface this, this with, there is no, that I can come up with, there's no negative reason to not buy a quality tool. So I, I, it's just my opinion. You'll never regret buying a quality tool, uh, spending a little extra money. This is definitely not something I would do if I was comparing this like Harbor Freight to you know, Home Depot, that's not what I would say. This is definitely with, this is definitely worth 50 bucks. Okay, this, and it, this is kind of fun. It's like Christmas, because like I said, I ordered all this stuff in one afternoon. It took me about an hour. Okay, here's something I'm very curious about. All right, so what we have here are some files and they even have that orange rubber uh, on them like the Stu Mac tools. And um, these aren't fret slot files. These are diff different kinds of, uh, or no, sorry, uh, nut slot files. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be talking when I'm looking at. Uh, these are just various files that you can use and I wanna, say this was about eight bucks. Again, I'll post all the actual prices. They look really shoddy. I mean, this looks, to my first impression, this looks like horrible trash. Uh, <laughs> it's rusted. Stay away from this. For the same, well, for about double the price of this, you can buy one fret and dress file from Stu Mac. And I looked everywhere on Amazon for a fret and dress file. I'll put a picture of it right there and a link down to Stu Mac down below. If you can find that file, please don't find me garbage like this. If you can find that file for less money than what Stu Mac's selling for, let me know, send it to me or put a comment down below. I would love to share that with you guys. But this, I would rather put my $8 towards a good quality file. Um, these just look, 
I'll tell you this, not to be horrible, and I'm sure some of you guys use these and you probably had some good results. I'm not saying you can't use these. What I'm saying is, is just looking at these, I would not want to put these on a customer's guitar. So, um, or my guitar. So I'm not even going to try and use I, I'll never even try those. That's just, just does not feel right. This is something cool. This is something the Stumac doesn't have. I got this from Melissa. You guys, I'll put a link down below. You, I did a Sharp Max with Melissa. Melissa is a, a viewer who decided to do uh, a Sharp Max where she did her own guitar. She found this thing. I had never seen one of these before, which is funny because I use the sponge. I think this, yeah. This thing is cool. This is a soldering iron tin cleaner. Somebody right now is putting in the comments, he's saying 10 and not 10 and 10. I hate this, man. T-I-N, T-E-N, T-I-N, 10, whatever. Uh, it's a, it's like a copper Brillo pad. You stick it right here, you put this cap on it, and uh, it's probably easier to do it the other way. Very cool, this is definitely cool. I'll put the price of this. Again, everything was very reasonable. Um, this, this, Cool little Ziploc bag, so we don't have to cut anything open. This is the 15-piece guitar L.O. Luthier. <laughs> L.O. dot 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 Uter. <laughs> it does say that. L.U. dot dot. And then like the word guitar, but no G. And bass. So it means guitar and bass. Lute, lute, guitar, lute, guitar, and bass. Set up. New. Made in Chennai, which is China. Um, so first things first, we'll look at these. These are radius gauges. Now I have, I have Stumac ones that I really, really like that I've had my Stumac ones now for like 15 years. Uh, very apparent real fast that these are a lot thinner than the ones from Stumac. What these are for, so you can figure out what radius your guitar is, but leave your strings on. That's what these little cutouts are for. Put this on. Um, very cool. These... I want to touch one to make sure they're not sharp and jagged. What I care about is that they're not so sharp that you can scar the fretboard up with this um, and thin. This is a little sharp and a little thin. Uh, would I be afraid of these? No, I mean, I'd be cautious. Again, you're not going to use these very often. I don't use these very often. Um, usually if a customer brings in a guitar, I'll just go check to make sure what radius it is. Sometimes, you know, if I'm setting the radius of the, of the bridge or something, um, and I, you know, I'm adjusting it with the strings on. Okay, here is what I'm really interested in. This is a very expensive tool, Stu Mac. This is the String Action Ruler. Um, and it's in millimeters, which is what I use. Uh, I don't use the, uh, it's, and first problem is it's bent. <laughs> oh, and you can bend it. The first Stumac, I actually have two of these. I have the first one from Stumac and it was thin like this, but it didn't bend. And now the new one is thicker. And I, I really like that it's a thicker piece. Uh, but again, I want to make sure this is not sharp. This feels again, like it's not, and I can see, I can see the, the tooling marks on this where it was cut, you know, where it was cut out of a sheet of metal. And you don't want that, it's very rough to hear because again, you're gonna put this on your frets and measure the distance of the top of the fret to the string. This I would not use. Um, could you use it? Sure, sure. For the price, it's great. Um, if you got this, just be careful not to slide it back and forth. Again, I, I would afraid these would scratch or mark the frets. Um, especially on the side here. This, I'm not very excited about this. I don't recommend this. But again, uh, I'm saying, it, you know, it's worth buying a quality one. But this comes with the kit and for the price, it was like you could throw that away. And this, so far, so far from the price I paid for this, these already kind of make sense. These are the other radius gauges I use. And my original ones I had from Stumac looked exactly like this. I still have them. And I always liked them, but I always thought one thing that sucks is it sucks because sometimes when you go in, this is where you go in and go underneath the string uh, to check the radius, and they were too thick. And now the Stumac ones are thinner. And so these are great. Um, I like the Stumac ones way, way better for the thinnerness, uh, the, how thin the piece is on the Stumac ones. But, but uh, keep in mind, for about 10 or 15 years, I used the Stumac ones were this thick and I didn't complain, so uh, you wouldn't complain. What's nice is they're probably marked 20 inch uh, radius, 17, 16, 15, 14, 10, 
12, nine and a half, uh, seven and a quarter. So they have all the ones you want. Quality wise, they feel pretty good. Nice, uh, nice cut marks on here. No, I'm not freaking out about scarring your fretboard. So again, these two things make this pack totally worth it. Um, and uh, last, this is something I don't actually have from Stumac. This is a thickness gauge. And it's a little bent, it's all bent up, man. You can tell how cheap this stuff is because it's all bent up. This is great. This is a way of using like a gap gauge, right? Um, it's oiled, you can feel the oil so it doesn't rust. There's no rust on the tool. Uh, very cool, especially for what we need. You can find these at automotive stores. You can find these at hardware stores, but a lot of times they have the wrong thicknesses for what we need. Um, so these are great. You can use these from everything from checking out how thick a slot on a, uh, on a nut is to uh, checking the uh, how thick or the distance, like I said, using that ruler. In fact, for this kit, I wouldn't use this ruler. I would actually throw this ruler away and I would use this. Um, but this kit, the way it sits, this, totally worth the money. I would definitely go with that. Um, don't like any of those as much as any Stool Mac tools, um, but for the price, very cool. This thing is the 26 piece guitar repair toolkit. Okay, cool. This is something I'm very excited about because I use the Daddario uh, toolkit and this was a really good deal. And I had tried the um, Harley Benton one and it was okay. Uh, I actually bought a bunch of those for, for some friends. So uh, right off the, uh, the bat, I should say, uh, you have the copy of the ESP tool. Um, Nomad makes a really good version of this. And then of course the ESP tool makes a really good one. This one, I would definitely smooth this over. So again, I would take some, some wet sand and just smooth this out. Um, I would probably use a micro mesh and we'll get that in a minute, but something and polish this. I think if you polish this, this is good. I, so if you get this kit, polish this, um, because as it sits, it little, feels a little sharp and a little dangerous, especially this hole, even this hole, there's a, there's a, um, I can feel where they drilled out the hole and now there's a barb uh, on the edge. The entire edge of this hole is a barb. And if you put this again on the guitar, you're taking a chance that you're going to use that hole as something sticking out. It's going to scratch the finish. This is something that you literally are going to pop knobs off with your guitar, tighten the, uh, the bridge post, tighten tuning keys. This is something that, um, I don't know if I trust this. So there you go. Uh, came with this cool little thing full of picks. Hey, you get a couple picks. That's cool. If you can get them out of there, there you go. Uh, non, non logoed picks, a uh, little leatherette keychain thing. That's definitely cool. Uh, one of these little inexpensive string winders, definitely legit. Um, I'm going to try to put it back so I don't lose this. Ah, this came with a uh, Fritz ruler. It says Fritz, Fritz string action ruler. They, they put, they made up numbers, six, one, and then it says low, and then uh, this is high, and <laughs> this is for your acoustic guitar. This is great. It's just a re quick reference guide. You can see where they're going with this. Ah, some millimeters on the side here. Um, so very cool little card. I'd, I'd want to check this out to see how cool it is, but um, I like that it's a card. You can't really damage anything with that. So put that down. They give you some, some pegs for your acoustic guitar, some Allen wrenches that are the most common ones. Five millimeter. This is the Allen wrench that's going to fit almost all of your import um, truss rods. So they gave you that one, which is good. You get a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Does it? Nope. It's just a Phillips head screwdriver. There you go. So it's for tightening pickguard screws. It looks like the cheap dollar store thing. You get more of those files. There, the, the, has three of these cr those crappy files. These actually look way better than those. Uh, quality wise, they still same thing. The, the, the this whatever's on here, this is not right. It's too rough. This looks like this. I've seen stuff like this at the dollar store. This is not good. I would put those there. You get a little ruler. I don't know why you'd want this ruler, but you have a little ruler. Uh, there you go. Uh, this kit is, uh, and wire cutters for changing strings. Um, and then fret guards. And these are another thing that when you get on uh, Amazon, I got a kit, I did a review for Sharp Max with fret guards and they were really cool. But uh, again, you gotta watch out for the sharp edges. This is the stuff that's scary. And again, you can polish the stuff. Ah. Very sharp. This is very sharp again and rough, very rough. Uh, so I would polish all this, all of this 
And I can actually, this one, I can physically see the barbs in this. Um, I feel like I could rip uh, paper with this. So that's the problem again. Again, aesthetically, this looks like what you're buying somewhere else, but they don't feel right. So could you salvage this kit? Yes. I'm not in love with this kit. Um, I love the Daddario one. That is my favorite toolkit in a pouch like this. I found no exceptions to what I like. This is one I'm really excited. I'm gonna use this, just cut this bag open. Here's something I, Stumac doesn't carry. And um, I thought this could be fun. This uh, is a soldering kit complete. Uh, and I thought, th hey, that's what I was looking for. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, very excited about this. So um, this kit, very, very priced, very well. Um, put it right here. Uh, here's what you get. You get a multimeter. Um, it's uh, Obviously, this is all very inexpensive Chinese-made uh, stuff, like Harbor Freight quality stuff, but this multimeter is uh, great. It comes with your clips, so you can do some testing. Like I've seen, I'll put links in videos where I show you how to use a multimeter and tools like this. Very cool. This is another cool tool. This is exactly... Uh, reminds me of the solder sucker that you get from Stumac. There's is blue. There's feels a little better quality than this, but again, if you're not doing a lot of soldering, this is something that's really nice having a solder sucker. Um, again, oh, I can feel the quality difference in how it, <laughs> you know, it just works. And the edges again, kind of rough, but uh, not nothing to hate about this at all. Uh, the little sponge it gives you is a kind of a joke, but you can get a sponge. Uh, what do you need a sponge for? Well, here's what's cool. It comes with a soldering iron and it comes with, uh, how do we attach this? Oh, you got, I'm sure it's got a little screw and yep. And you put the little screw in. So there's your, there's your station and it comes with a really inexpensive, uh, soldering iron. And again, uh, this soldering iron, oh, but what was great was this soldering iron has a little dial for the, so you can actually set the uh, temperature. And um, it's a 110, or 110 volt uh, soldering iron, uh, 60 watts. So uh, bare minimum what you need, in my opinion. But here's what I loved about it. I mean, obviously I'm looking for UL stickers. I'm not seeing any, so please keep in mind, you know, that's something you have to think about when you buy this stuff on Amazon. I'm not seeing the UL sticker would make me feel safe, but here's what I liked. This one came with an on off switch, clearly labeled on off, off. So you can turn this off. Uh, we normally have to unplug these. That's cool. So you can turn it off and unplug it when you're not using it. Um, it feels pretty good. And the fact that it had a dial, this is a nice little soldering station. So you think of this, you have a soldering station, especially if you're not gonna solder very often. What I loved about this was cause it came in this little to go thing, I was even thinking about, this could be something I would leave in my truck. You know what I mean? If I'm somewhere, I, you know, you, you, I, it's happened to me before where I'm at somewhere and somebody's like, oh, this isn't working. I wish we had a soldering iron. And I, I never thought about having a portable kit. I usually carry my portable uh, tool kit with me, um, but this little soldering station is great. Uh, different soldering tips right there. Check that out. I'm already liking this a lot. That's the screw we need, so you put that together. Oh, there's your screwdriver. It's a full screwdriver kit. Phillips flathead screwdrivers. That's cool, it looks like a little pen set, but they're all in there. And of course, some solder. I don't know if it's lead free or not, it doesn't say. A little razor blade for slicing stuff and cutting stuff, so. Um, oh, for probably cutting wire. This is probably how you cut wire. Oh, and you can, yep, you can you can uh, strip your wire and cut your wire with this little tool. So like wire strippers, but it's flat. That's a cool little tool tool as well. Tool as well. Um, so that's the entire kit. This is cool. I, I, I like this. Other than it doesn't have a UL rating. Last. Last is something I'm really import, uh, important. You guys led me onto this. As you guys know, I use MicroMesh. I found this on Amazon. This is MicroMesh, the brand of MicroMesh. MicroMesh is a brand of products. They use it uh, in the airline industry. They use it and um, this is what I use when I do fret work. This is all I use. Um, I, I recommend if you don't buy MicroMesh, they use steel wool. A lot of you guys don't like steel wool. Although I tell you, if you're gonna use steel wool to work on your frets, uh, just go ahead and use some painter's tape, cover up your pickups and everywhere that you don't want the wool to get, you know, little metal flakes in there. Uh, some of you guys use some, somebody, uh, some kind of sanding block you guys are buying. I, I don't use those. I've looked everywhere and I have not found one. 
uh, that I would ever put near a guitar, any of those already made pre-made sanding blocks. Um, this micro mesh uh, is sandpaper. The first sheet is 1500 grit. This is 1500. This is what I start. This is the only, this is, this is the lowest number I will use around a neck. If I'm, unless I'm making a guitar and I want to physically sand wood, 1500. This is a polishing kit is the way I look at this. So 1500 is where I start. And so think of this, I will, I will, uh, if I, if I'm uh, sanding the sides of the guitar neck, the edges, if I'm doing the frets, 1500, then it goes to 1800, then 2400. So somebody actually, so you know, this is funny. Uh, then it goes to uh, 24 or 3200, 3600 grit, 4000 grit, 9000, or oh, sorry, what is it? Oh, 6000 grit, 8000 grit, and then it ends at 12000 grit. And somebody actually posted on a video that I made, a Sharp My Axe, when I was talking about this. They actually put 12000 grit LOL that doesn't exist. Uh, it's right here, uh, buddy. Uh, this is what you use. Uh, I've been using the micro mesh sets now for over a decade. It is one of my biggest secrets uh, that I, I started using. Obviously, tons of people use them, but I'm telling you, if you want perfect frets, you use this system, but it is extremely expensive. It's $28 on Stumac. I found this set for $12 on Amazon. It is micro mesh. The sheets are smaller than they give you on Stumac, however, and the block is smaller. However, uh, this is all you get to use. In fact, one of my biggest complaints about the Stumac one is the sheets are really long, but you can't like use the corner of a sheet or uh, the other corner sheet. It's really hard. You end up using just the centerpiece and these don't last very long. Um, so uh, I am going to tell you right now, uh, buy this. So what did we discover? Well, the fret bender, I definitely give that a, a B. I don't know why that's not an A plus, but it's a B. B means buy. Files. This is an F for freaking don't buy. <laughs> uh, if you guys had good luck with these and you use these, put that in the comments down below. But uh, just no, I don't even want to try that. Um, to me, uh, a file, a fret in dress file at Stumac that's 12 to $20 could last the average person in their home working on their guitars uh, years, years. I mean, come on, man. Just cup a couple cups of coffee a year and you have that nice file. Uh, this, is, uh, this is no go. This just seems like the stuff I see at Harbor Freight where I'm like, in fact, I bet you this tool, same kits at Harbor Freight, probably for less. So pass on that. This thing, uh, I, like I said, if you want to watch somebody use it, Melissa, I put a link to that video. Check this thing out. This thing is really cool. I like the idea because I'm always putting water on the sponge. And when I saw her do that, I go, oh, that's way cooler than, than what I've been doing. Uh, so there's cool. This kit, uh, which is uh, kit number, what did we say? Whatever. This kit, uh, I like I said, ditch this ruler. But uh, to be honest, with this gap gauge and these and this, I think this is a nice little kit. And for the price, it's definitely worth it. This tool kit, eh, it's all right. Uh, if you're on a budget, I think this is the best, but this is the best budget toolkit. Better than the Harley Benton one, better than some of the ones I've seen where you get from, from manu other manufacturers. But I'm telling you, the Daddario one will blow this thing away. It comes with a neck cradle. It comes with, I mean, it's the most thought out one out there. It's about 80 bucks. And so, you know, I use that thing so much. It's probably the most used toolkit that I use. So uh, there, so this is a, um, uh, this is a D for uh, do it if you want. <laughs> This is a B. This is a soldering kit. This is a B for buy. Uh, so buy that if you're interested. And of course, the micro mesh is definitely a B for buy. So overall, very impressive. I'll put the totals right somewhere around here of what I paid for all this. If you guys like this idea of a video of me buying other tools and trying them out, uh, I plan to get other tools all, all kinds of prices and uh, just giving you my thoughts. Um, maybe you'd like to see me use these tools on a guitar. I, I was going to do that. And my biggest fear was exactly what I kind of predicted, which is some of these tools I wouldn't use. I'm not even going to try to use this on a guitar. This just feels r weird to me. I, I, I could use this, but I don't have to. That's my problem, is I don't want to show you guys how to use something where I don't believe in it. So I'm sorry <laughs> on that note. Wow, that was fun. All right, guys, as always, I want to thank you so much. This was a fun video for me. Uh, this is actually one of the funnest videos I've done in a long time. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I want to thank you so much for your time. Until the next time, know your gear.